Hello everyone, welcome to your lecture on media representation of the third gender. This lecture is part of your paper on gender media and society. It will focus on the media coverage regarding sexualities. Communication forms one of the basic elements of societal existence and media serves an important function in a society. While there are gender specific services, mass media functions significantly for the development and upliftment of the minority groups, particularly for those groups which historically have been and continue to be marginalized, mass media representation is of great eminence. Noted by Mark J. W. D. Jong in 2006. Jong is of the view that mass media images contribute to the construction of social reality. It is not that every individual completely believes in mass media for all sorts of information and opinion, but at the same time, most of them do get affected with the kind of representation in media. Similarly, third gender people who are resembled as transgendered are indispensable constituent of the society. Before undertaking an analysis of media influence on third genders, it is pertinent to understand this group of people who are regarded as minorities in the societies. Susan Dobless in 1994 and Larry Gross in 2001 suggest that the mass media impact the manner in which women and gay men comprehend about themselves how they reassess their standing in the society and how accordingly they communicate with other men and women. Magnus Hirschfeld was among the pioneers to study homosexuals in the early 20th century. He noted that although homosexual men were interested sexually in other men, some men were apparently trying to be women full or part time. They dressed in women's clothing and attempted to be women in Berlin clubs and bars as cited in transgender images in the media by Aruni in 2006. The word transsexual was coined by a small magazine. In 1980, Virginia Prince, a transvestite in Los Angeles, coined the term transgender. Earlier, transgender was considered as those who lived the life of opposite sex without undergoing any surgery. Later, transgender has morphed into an inclusive term for anyone who is gender variant, who full or part-time acts or behaves as the other sex, Aruni in 2006. With the concept of third gender coming, Kate Bonstein in 1994 stated that one need not be either male or female. The idea was solely a binary establishment by society. Between those two poles was a fertile ground for variation the third gender could take many forms. Dominant views in the society are usually divided into males and females as quoted by Aruni in 2006 page 119. With gender identity becoming a key element to a person's existence, mass media happens to play a significant role in building the same for the third gender. Media coverage of transgender. Since the third gender face immense challenge to prove their existence every day, mass media's role in portrayal of their causes and aspirations are counted the most. Many scholars believe that mass media coverage of transgender persons were more sensational items. According to Aruni 2006, page 122, to those in the transgendered community, media coverage is often seen as insensitive and prejudicial. He noted that although the media has 
with time learned to cover gay men, lesbians and even swingers in balanced formats, representation of the transsexual and transgendered often turns into a source of snide humor and sensationalism. Studies have found that transgendered persons have high risk of suicidal tendency. Therefore, sudden media glare or misrepresentation of their characteristics might be upsetting for this section. Aruni in 2006 states, all transsexuals are vulnerable to internalizing an extremely negative image of themselves. They face internal disagreement between the media generated images and their longing to become the person they apprehend themselves to be. In such situations, media coverage regarding their existence proves to be of vital importance. Scholars have found out that differential treatments are meted out to transgendered while covering any reports. A tonal change in anchor person's voice or a smile on the newscaster's face might make a person belonging to the third gender believe as someone alien to the society. The mass media often marginalize certain groups because they perpetuate stereotypes. Scholars believe that there is need for visibility to do away with stereotypes in media. Minorities are frequently stereotyped, yet they need the visibility to negotiate more accurate representations of themselves in the media, as mentioned by Joshua Gamson in 1998. The status of transgender person was also not very safe earlier. Discrimination was quite a natural outcome of the same. Following the same, the transgendered group generally seeks privacy. They are mostly aloof from the dominant debate and discussion. And if ever they are part of some deliberations, it would be for all wrong reasons. In Indian tradition, it has been seen that transgender persons live together away from their families. They take up new identities and live in a different set of atmosphere. These people lack self-confidence in most of the cases and are always in cluster instead of doing anything individually. The transgendered are generally engaged in odd jobs or beg to earn for living. In fact, until a long time they used to live as either women or men frightened to reveal their identity. Many fear that the revelation might destroy their career or jeopardize their social status. Media representation of homosexuals. While talking about gender and sexualities, the representation of gay men and lesbians also demand attention. During the 1950s, the news media's systematic portrayal of homosexuals as sex perverts and divines may have affected the way society treated and perceived homosexuality and subsequently how homosexuals perceived themselves according to Mark J. W. D. Jong 2006 page 40. Lesbians and gays hardly found any voice in news media. Jong noted that mass media initially indulged with over-representation of gay men as well-groomed white and middle class. Such impressions relegated gay men who are poor or belong to the working class. The reality was hardly visible in the mainstream media. These groups of people were rarely discussed and critiqued. 
the condition of lesbian representation was even more invisible in media however jong states that lesbian invisibility was not very uncommon since way back in 1950s homosexuality was predominantly discussed as a domain reserved for white middle class males these images led to the creation of a false impression among the audience members as social historian alan berube in 1990 states despite the stereotype the gay male population is not as white as it appears to be in images of gay men projected by the mainstream and gay media or among the out men including myself who move into the public spotlight as representative gay activists writers commentators and spokesmen in news media it was more often found that homosexuality was dealt upon by others closeted lesbians and gay men or heterosexuals as a relational topic jong 2006 page 40 Their issues were deliberated upon by medical experts or politicians who themselves condemned homosexuality. It was only after the formation of Metishain Society that gay men and lesbians had a scope for associations through which they could make their voices heard. However, their coverage was still very limited owing to the fear among scribes that if too much is written about them writers might be criticized for being pro homosexuals it is a well known fact that newspapers and magazines play a huge role in shaping the perceptions and eventually the public agenda is formed on that basis invisibility of lgbt issues in media transformed into a social reality in 1950s In his study The Lavender Scare David Johnson in 2004 mentioned that during the 1950s most of the newspapers used coded language to report on homosexuality as cited by Jong in 2006 page 42 in From Invisibility to Subversion It can be suggested that the newspapers of those times merely alluded to homosexuality without openly mentioning about it the vagueness in such reporting often led to misinterpretation of facts as johnson in 2004 states when not referred to directly as homosexuals or sex perverts such persons were often called moral weakling sexual misfits moral risks with regard to employment in the federal government misfits undesirables or persons with unusual morals naturally these articles contributed in the misframing of gays and lesbians and they were strongly eschewed in the society as if a person having different sexual orientation is equivalent to having committed a sex crime However, some of the major newspapers such as the New York Times and the Los Angeles Times and current affair magazine Time and Newsweek were straightforward while reporting stories on homosexuals according to Mark J W D Jong in 2006. Jong in his chapter called from invisibility to subversion provided an example of such straight reporting in one 1950 los angeles times article titled congress hears 5000 perverts in fist capital it was reported that according to washington vice squad there were about 5000 homosexuals in the capital and that 3 out of 4 of them work for government hence it is clearly notable that 1950s media representation in most of the cases depicted gays and lesbians as bad citizens 
their images were stereotyped as white men and as sex perverts. They were hardly accepted as normal human beings in society. According to Jong 2006 page 49, news media during that period played an active role in negative portrayal of homosexuals as they failed to question politicians negative statements on homosexuality and perpetuated the idea that homosexuality was a sex perversion. With invisibility found in media, minorities lacked access which led to denial of their rights. This impacted the self-esteem of the homosexual community which gave rise to various movements across the world demanding rights and acceptance for gays and lesbians in the society. Indian scenario Even as the constitution of India provides for the fundamental right to equality and grants no intolerance and discrimination on the grounds of sex, caste, creed or religion, the social stigma attached to transgenders were still prevalent for a long time. Some of the basic problems faced by the transgender community were those of discrimination, lack of employment opportunities and that of destitution. They also faced rejection on grounds of receiving proper education. The group was even denied basic medical facilities like services related to HIV care and hygiene. It has been often witnessed that the third gender people are susceptible to depression and hence need counselling which was hardly delivered to them. Many were also victims of drug abuse as well as problems related to marriage and adoption. These issues gradually led to social exclusion for those community. The transgendered were threatened even in matters related to their basic existence. They lacked the power to hold opinion in the society over issues concerning themselves. In 1994, this community was granted with voting rights. However, a controversy followed the direction as several were denied cards with sexual category of their preference. After prolonged activism and movements, the Supreme Court of India in a landmark judgment on April 15, 2014 granted third gender status to transgenders. This ruling created a separate status for transgenders who no longer had to come under the category of either male or female. The Apex Court of India allowed provision for transgenders to get admitted in educational institutions or to opt for employment under the third gender category. It was a victorious stand for the transgender as their identities got legal recognition. However, it has to be remembered that no such change is possible to be embraced without media and their influence. These reports were not only carried by different media channels and publication houses, but were given the supreme position or time slots. They were run continuously across different media platforms to inculcate among the audiences the significance of the ruling. Media helped the news to be reflective upon the society and therefore to be adopted by various sectors in practice. While the Supreme Court direction enforced a status for the transgenders, the media coverage of same in positive light enabled to raise attention about social welfare for the community. The Apex Court in 2014 directed state governments 
as well as the center to implement social welfare schemes for third genders. Mahapatra 2014 in the Times of India article, Supreme Court recognizes transgenders as third gender. The order also spoke about the need to undertake general public awareness campaign to remove social taboo. Media took up the owners too to represent their issues and giving them a platform to their long-standing demands. Several human rights activists not belonging to the third gender category also supported movements for the community's betterment. Media played a major role in mobilizing such functions by bringing the topic of transgender held as taboo initially into the mainstream and eventually converting it to public agenda. Like the same ruling of the Supreme Court paved way for creation of public toilets for the transgendered since it was detrimental to their self-esteem to use either the male or female ones. Without the power of media to disseminate information and promote their causes, discrimination meted out to transgenders are hard to erode from the roots of the society. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer and intersex people in India face legal and social difficulties since homosexual intercourse is considered to be a criminal offence under Section 377 of the Indian Penal Code 1860. According to the law as cited in Voices Against the 377, whoever voluntarily has carnal intercourse against the order of nature with any man, woman or animal shall be punished with imprisonment for life or with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to 10 years and shall also be liable to fine. It was in 2008 that Indian cities of Delhi, Calcutta and Bangalore held their first gay pride parades which were hugely covered by the mass media. Delhi High Court in 2009 noted that section 377 and other legal prohibitions against private adult consensual and non-commercial same sex happen to be a direct violation of fundamental rights provided by the Indian constitution. However, even held as taboo by conservative section, several freedom loving people who necessarily did not belong to LGBT community voiced their opinions in favor of the lesbians and gays. In 2009, the Delhi High Court declared a part of Section 377 of the IPC unconstitutional and hence decriminalized consensual homosexual acts in private saying, the section denies a gay person a right to full personhood. However, in 2013, the Supreme Court recriminalized homosexuality once again. The issue was taken up strongly by several media platforms. As Prakash in 2016 in the Hindustan Times article wrote, but the real question relates to the constitutional rights of LGBT community. The 2013 Supreme Court verdict criminalizing homosexual act goes against established constitutional principles of personal liberty, equality before law and non-discrimination on the basis of sex or sexual preferences. The legal stand was time and again questioned. It was the media which brought to public glare the interest of the LGBT community. The HD article further stated that presuming that homosexuality is against the prevailing social morality, 
a passive larger interest of the society be given precedence over individual liberty and right to privacy guaranteed under Article 21 of the Constitution. Can the state or society regulate the sexual preference and behavior of consenting adults in private? Even social media platforms were flooded with criticisms of the Supreme Court ruling during that period. Conclusion Summing up this lecture, we learnt that while media cannot ensure legal rights to lesbian and gay community, coverage on the same helps the section feel a part of the society. With several developed countries like the United States, France, even neighboring Nepal and Taiwan recently legalizing homosexuality, the pressure has increased in the Indian front too. Besides the informational and recreational needs of LGBT, media plays a far-fetching role in increasing their acceptance in the society. The LGBT community attempts to gain access to media to voice out their ordeals to the majority dominant class as well as to the policy makers. In India, film festivals for LGBT community are organized to provide a platform to this section for their representation. Even as homosexuality is not decriminalized, permissions are given to hold Kashish Mumbai International Queer Film Festival and Bangalore Queer Film Festival. While the outcry through several campaigns benefited transgenders, getting a legal identity in India, the LGBTs tryst with the law to seek rights for their sexual preferences without state's interference is high on media agenda. Hope you enjoyed the lecture. For more details, Please read the text of this lecture properly and attempt the questions in the end. Thank you.